Lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash, live via Skype from England. Jacob Hank Hanegraaff, the Bible Answer Man. Should we be getting any kind of answers from this man today? I first met him when we were both on the same Christian radio station being interviewed in Hawaii a number of years ago, shortly after Chuck Smith resigned from his board. This is a long story going way back to the time of Dr. Walter Martin, a man of God who God used as an apologist and as an evangelist to people in cults at that particular time. Unfortunately, something happened with Dr. Martin. While he was very gifted and very noble of intent himself, he surrounded himself with people who were not always of noble character. Some of them were rather nefarious, one of which was uh, Hank Hanegraaff, and Hank Hanegraaff was not the only one who was pro problematic. Robert Morey is another one. He surrounded himself with people where there are major ethical major ethical issues. When I met Hank, I was not impressed. He had written a book I agreed with uh, concerning refuting the money preachers. After Dave Hunt wrote The Seduction of Christianity, his book was the follow-up classic, and it was a good book. But the outline and concept of that book existed before him. It came from other people who had been previously associated with Dr. Walter Martin's ministry, including Jackie and Professor Bill Elmore, who's now with the Lord. Um, let's go, oh, Dr. Bill Elmore, who's now with the Lord. Let's go forward and look at this. Something happened with that ministry that Hank got control of it. He has done things that Dr. Walter Martin certainly never would have approved of, that Dr. Walter Martin's family says Dr. Martin would not approve of, and that decent people who were associated with that ministry such, such as Dr. Ron Rhodes, did not approve of and left. Over 30 people left in protest, largely on ethical grounds, after Hank Hanegraaff somehow managed to get control of that once fine organization. It's the organization responsible for Dr. Martin's books, um, Kingdom of the Cult, its second edition, and also his posthumous book, which I had the honor of I'll cover endorsing Kingdom of the Occult. Hank never should have gotten control of that ministry, but he did. When he wrote the book Refuting the Money Preachers, it was a good book, but the substance was not his. The research was done by others. And then his book against the counterfeit revivals of Toronto and Pensacola was good. But then something happened. Although his modus operandi might not have been noble up to that point. His refutations of error were, but then he went into extreme error himself. First there were ethical issues, then there were doctrinal issues. He went into a radical form of preterism, he went into replacement theology, which is always a red flag, he went into all manner of error. And there were scandals surrounding his organization. He debated Dr. Mark Hitchcock on the date of the authorship of the Book of Revelation, where Hank was propagating his radical preterism. He lost the debate to Dr. Mark Hitchcock handsomely. Dr. Mark Hitchcock literally bulldozed him, steamrolled him to nothing. He has never quite regained credibility since that debate, even though his credibility and certainly his ethical reputation was deteriorating well before it. Hank now has gone with his family into Eastern Orthodoxy. Eastern Orthodoxy is akin to Roman Catholicism. 
It believes in a sacramental form of regeneration, but it is acutely different than Roman Catholicism in certain other respects. It puts a hyperemphasis on something called theosis, God becoming one with man so man can become one with God, by which they don't primarily or simply mean the person of Christ, God becoming man, but they believe an icon becomes a vehicle for divine communication. You pray through the icon, which has a metaphysical property, to enter into the spiritual realm. This is pure occult practice. It is not spirituality. It is pure mysticism. There is much Gnosticism in Eastern religion. And the anti-Jewish rhetoric of John Chrysostom would certainly suit Hank Hanegraaff's replacement theology. I'm not completely surprised he's gone into Eastern Orthodoxy because he has already long departed from Biblical Evangelicism. No Christian should support that ministry anymore. No saved Christian should have anything to do with Hank Hanegraaff. The decent people who have been in that ministry, since, such as Dr. Ron Rhodes and Jill Rich, are still worthy, who is the daughter of, of Dr. Martin, are still worthy of our respect and in need of our prayers and support. Those are the good people. But as far as these other nefarious characters who came out of it, such as Robert Morey and Hank Hanegraaff, we should avoid those people like the plague. Hank didn't lose the plot when he entered the Eastern Orthodox Church. He lost the plot long before that. He lost it ethically, theologically, and spiritually. Now he's embraced what amounts to idolatry, superstition, and mysticism. That is Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you for your question. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But... In this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How? 
the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book, and the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.